Well, hi everyone, and welcome to the Coffee Fuel Woodsmith channel. Uh, for those of you that are new, I'm Chris. This is Tilly, who's my dog, and this is Specca, who's my buddy Johnny's dog. Um, if you can't tell, I am soaking wet, and uh, there hasn't been any filming up to this point, and that's because it's absolutely hammered down up till this point. We are an hour and 42 minutes into this trip already. Um, this adventure is going to take us through to Salmon River Lake and potentially up towards White Lake and hopefully we'll get into Admiral Lake at some point but uh, tonight I think we're going to stay on Salmon River Lake. Behind me this is just a little pond and I'll tell you what it's called. It's called Little Eel Pond. Our first lake we came into was I think just called Eel Pond and there's one more portage across to Salmon River Lake from here. So Johnny, Dave and myself are all uh, along for the trip. They're just back getting their canoe. I started out just slightly ahead of them. It took forever for us to find this portage. So I, when we finally found it, I had my canoe on my head and was started to walk just to check it out a little ways. And it turned out to be so good that uh, we just continued on. Hi, pup. Hi. Come here. Um, for anyone who thinks that um, searching and hunting for the portage is all part of the adventure, don't watch this part because what I'm going to do is film where the portage is on the way in when we're on our way back out. It is marked. It, we didn't readily see it, so I'll just take a quick shot of it from the water so you guys don't have to do the guesswork. Because really, once you get to here, uh, this road, it's fine. It's like an old woods road. Well, I've not had lunch yet, so I think I'm going to get the camera back under cover and see about making myself a sandwich. There's the pond behind. So Johnny and Dave made it. I'm gonna cook up a corned beef sandwich. Uh, does anybody want any of this? Because I actually have a lot of it. So who's this job with? Is this still with Midfoot Health? Hmm. A couple of bugs, not too bad. I guess I should have thought this through away, eh? but well, okay. So what does that mean? When did it even <laughs> What do you two think? Hmm? Alright girls. Okay, well, this is the portage back there. That's a pretty good uh, representation of what it is. There's a lot of boggy areas, but overall it's pretty nice. Dave's just grabbing his other stuff. Somebody's left a canoe, uh, actually a big old aluminum boat there. And this is Little Eel Pond. And I'll start pouring it right there, I think, is roughly where we're headed. We have taken the canoes across for part one. Sorry, there's going to be water on the lens, nothing I can do. Johnny's just taken his canoe across, so I've taken mine. I, uh, I brought the camera, although I don't think I'm going to be able to film much, but I just wanted to um, get a little bit of this boggy terrain in, so I'll show you that once we get there. This portage actually isn't bad, but uh, I'll try to get my boots here. Now you can kind of scooch around it a little bit, at times, but there's some sections like this right here that you, you kind of, you got no choice. The rain is letting off again, which is nice. It's warmed back up. This was kind of our only major obstacle in this whole portage. Johnny with his R14s probably would have struggled on that one. And this is Salmon River Lake. Not to be confused with the one we've gone to and you've seen on this channel, Salmon River Long Lake. It's a long, fairly narrow lake. That's towards the south side. And up there is towards the north, and I think that's where we're headed. Now you're going to have to put up with water on the, the lens. Either that or no footage whatsoever. That's a portage. Going to get a little bit of wind noise. 
I'm using two cameras this trip. I got this is my HX80, which is a little uh, Sony, and I'm using my big Canon. But uh, since I don't have a GoPro yet, I'm not waterproof. I'm risking this camera a little bit. It's a little bit soggy, but it's not too bad. So I'm gonna move on. Probably do a little bit of fishing. So if we catch anything, I'll show you. Rains finally let up just for a little bit. However, our entire paddle so far, it has been torrential. I think that goes over the Admiral in that direction. We're almost at the top of the lake now. All right, we have found our spot. This is actually an established campsite by the looks of it. Everything and everyone are soaking wet, including the pups. Yeah. Johnny and Dave are just on the other side of the camera. The wind has really come up, so we, uh, we have to move away from where this main established campsite is and uh, go back in the woods a bit. Taking the canoe back there, and right now I'm gonna go take the tarp in. Fortunately, we have cell service. So we're about three and a half, four hours getting here. I, I forget, I'd have to check. Three and a half hours. But that's stopping and having food and everything, so I'll try to clean the camera up a little bit, but here is our site that we're going into, back there. So that's where we were going to set up first, but we obviously can't. Grab my tarp, I'm going to help these guys out, Ooh. trusty shears. He's already the wind's a little bit better back here. Always hard at work. Johnny's got his tarp down here too. There we go. Okay, so we uh, fast forwarded about an hour or two just because it's so hard to film with the rain. Um, the boys got a uh, fire ring going. Johnny and I have been splitting and chopping wood and sawing sorry sawing and chopping wood cut it pretty small we found a dead i don't know i guess it's a fur over there so i'm gonna cut it up as fine as possible because everything is soaked try to maybe get rid of that bark off it and um, see if we can't get a fire going make some coffee oh um these gloves just just got these from outdoor research they're belay gloves i think the leather is going to be a little too thin they were I got them for half price, so it was a good deal, but I'm worried the, the leather's gonna be too thin for actually grabbing on stuff in the fire, but might as well test them out. out of this. Well the wind is starting to die down a little bit out on the lake and uh, I've got clothes, we all got clothes hanging everywhere. Johnny and Dave were able to get that fire going. Tilly is soggy and I don't know if you can see it. There's a percolator over there. I'm gonna go get some of that right now. I brought my uh, one of my first successful carved wood cup projects. So, although it does have a little crack in the front. All right. Cheers to coffee. My God, that is a thousand degrees Fahrenheit. <laughs> All right, well, uh, Johnny's over there still splitting wood. The man never stops him and Dave both. I tend to sit down a lot when we get to camp. They've got their fire going really well. Coffee is a little too hot still to drink. All right, so I've been designated as the, the cook for this evening. Um, I'm gonna be making chorizo burritos and, or as close to burritos it gets. Uh, what that's going to mean is I'm going to put 
two packages, so there's three of us for, for food. The two packages of this rice. Got one can of refried beans. Danger. I've got Danger. three chorizo sausage that are inside the, uh, the cooler. And then I've got enchilada sauce that Claire made. I know it's a burrito, but we're gonna put enchilada sauce on. And the last thing I have is diced red peppers and fresh jalapenos. So, so as with every time we come to the woods, we always break something. This is the first malfunction Johnny's had this trip that I know of. So, ooh, this was strawberries. And Johnny, Johnny bought the most robust Ziploc container you can find. <laughs> it is a screw lid. But um, the, the whole side is smashed in. So these, I guess inside here, which I'm getting strawberry juice on me now, was uh, strawberry, pure, whatever, puree. I think it's still frozen a bit. But uh, yeah, he lost most of it. Whatever his dessert is, I think we're gonna have it tonight. It'll be fine for the pot. Um, so I usually always drink Just Us coffee, which is uh, roasted here in Nova Scotia in Wolfville, I believe. Um, but uh, I just recently started trying some new stuff. My friend Tom put me onto this. It's um, Sunday Silence, it's made in Mahone Bay. This one's called Christopher and Bleecker, which is espresso, which I've had, uh, but in my espresso machine at home. The one that's actually in this bag right now is called Spectacular Bid, which is a medium roast. And that's what we're drinking now. I'm gonna start getting this supper put together. I'm gonna dice up those sausage and stick them in this pan. And do you guys mind jalapenos? I don't. Um, I'm going to put red peppers and jalapenos in with the sausage and let that cook. And a little bit of water that's in the jalapenos and the pepper should expedite the heating of the sausage, which are still all frozen. Um, you stay. So there was one other thing that I forgot. Copious amounts of cheese, always required. Hey, look! First time using the spoon. Oh, that's cool. <laughs> Yours is crazy clean. Do you guys eat refried beans? I've had them once or twice. I think we had them. Got a pair of fall ribbon shorts off a guy off of Facebook Marketplace for 20 bucks. All right. They're just light. I like thought if I got some wet, they would dry quick. Ooh. Oh my goodness, this is going to be so good. You guys don't even know. Okay, so this is the mixture. And the only other thing going to go on, we're going to put the enchilada sauce on at some point, probably closer towards the end. And then we're also going to add a lot of cheese to our burrito, and then we're going to toast them. You can just barely see them now, Johnny, but look, one, two, three, four, five, all right in that area. Okay, so this is Johnny's new waterproof case that he's trying out for today. Can you operate it through the thing? Can you? <laughs> it is time for the enchilada sauce to go in. So Claire made this for us. It's obviously, as the name suggests, for enchiladas. However, I think it's gonna be really good in this. Ooh, it's enormous. All right, grab one of those pots. That's a lot of cheese. But I think that's all right. Oh, thanks, Steve. Okay, uh, I will try to fold this in the correct fashion. Yeah, right. <laughs> There's no correct fashion. Hmm. I think I'm doing it. Okay, one. Okay, next. <clears throat> One. Thank you. One, Dave. There should be. All right. I just had to grab some food for the dog. There we, there we go. 
Mm. Oh my god. Yeah, the wraps are good too. <laughs> oh man. Yep, that is good. Oh, she's hot though. Uh -huh. Good thing you're in the tent by yourself, Dave. <laughs> well, supper is out of the way now, and Johnny may make us some dessert, although I'm pretty stuffed. I had one enchilada, and Johnny and Dave both had one and a half, and it was kind of a lot. Or they didn't even have quite a full half because the second ones were small. So there is where we came in. Down there, you can see the red canoe. And Dave is setting up just uh, to the left of that canoe. Johnny is setting up kind of in the same area. I'll show you that later. Uh, where we were getting away from the wind is back over there. Can I get that in there? There we go. And uh, I am gonna now set up my hammock back here because this spot has like one campsite right, right on the, I guess it would be the south side of this little tiny peninsula. And then one in the middle north side, which is this way. And it's actually pretty nice. Now the other one has, this is just a sleeping spot on this side. And the other side had a, a fire ring. But I, uh, I think I'm gonna like this one because I've got lake all the way around. So that's a little cove at the top. And that's back facing towards south. So let's get this hammock set up. Johnny, what's this going to be called? This is strawberry, I don't know what it is, air puffs. Strawberry <laughs> shortcake? Yeah, it says it's on shortcake on it. Whatever those things are. Grub? I'm going to have some whiskey. There's my new enamel cup. My friend Laws made for me for his, uh, his wedding. Don't mind my dirty fingers. It's been a long day. It's time to put some bourbon in that. Wait, uh, no, I'm not drinking bourbon. What am I drinking? Uh, 40 Creek double aged, double barrel aged or something. I just got a little bit of water in here. I'll lengthen it with. Where's yours? Um, I'm gonna get it in a sec. You want some of that? No, I'm good. No. I'm Cheers, Laws. Are we all getting that much? Uh, yeah. Ooh. All right. I can't wait for the pièce de résistance that you're gonna put uh, on top. Oh, Dave. Yeah, here Dave has this. Oh. Watch it fall all over the place. Yeah, I can see it. <laughs> Wicked. <laughs> That's the best part of it. I'm gonna handle that. Oh my god, I go to the uh, my hammock to get my spoon and I come back and my dog had her face in my biscuit apparently. Didn't ya? What do you have to say for yourself? Do you have anything to say for yourself? Mmm. I can see why you wanted it, pup. That's good. Isn't it? Wow. Wow. And now like that, they're back in Colorado, so. So it's 11.10 at night. Um, I'm not sure how much you can see me because the camera is fairly fogged over, but it's been a pretty productive day. Um, we got a lot done. It took us three and a half hours to get here, which is a little extreme, but I guess with the weather we had, that's not too bad. Uh, hopefully do a little bit more filming tomorrow than today, obviously, because of all the rain, but yeah, so far so good. Day one, we're here for four total days, if I never mentioned it. Uh, three nights. So, lots to look forward to. We'll see you in the morning.
Well, good morning, everybody. It's uh, 7:45, and it was a rough night. Um, Tilly woke me up at 3:30 because apparently she was throwing up. So Johnny let her out, and uh, she came over and woke me up, and then um, I was fine. So I took her back over there right shortly after and put her back to bed and then at 5 30 she woke me up again so I'm not sure if at that point she had to get up and throw up again or if she just wanted to come over so we uh we've been hanging out in the hammock since then so I've been just half asleep she's kind of been up and down she slept the last hour so pretty solid but she's now gone back over to see if she can wake Johnny up I think um it rained pretty much the entire night, and it's still light raining, if you can hear that on the tarp. Um, so I finally got up. It's at 8.30 now. Uh, just wandering around camp a little bit. The boys are still asleep, so I'm not going to make too, too much noise. But uh, I've retreated back to our uh, main little shelter. And I, we're going to move this over to where their tents are because the wind is pretty much all but gone, which is awesome. Unfortunately, nothing has really dried. Hung the shirt up here last night, and it, it's still like, super damp to the touch like I'm surprised it didn't drip when I just squeezed it and that was just in my spare bag for whatever reason I have a bag that's uh my dog's just running I have a bag inside my big pack that's waterproof and I packed that shirt last minute because I forgot to pack an undershirt or a spare undershirt and I just put it in my food bag thinking oh it'd be fine not realizing how much rain we were going to get so Unfortunately, that got soaked. I've not even wore that. That's just been soaked from sitting in my bag. So, And the bugs are out too, so I've had to put on some, uh, some bug spray, which is fine. Hopefully, I'll keep them off. I'll show you the tarp setup now. where we threw all of our stuff to keep it dry. So basically, it was so windy, we brought the canoe in as a windbreak, used my traverse tarp as a windbreak, and then Johnny's big AquaQuest tarp, we put up for the main portion of the rain. in when we put the eggs on. So, I'll just start warming them up. Uh, there. Thank you. Watch your nose. Thanks, Johnny. Oh. Yeah. Put the egg on that.
All right, well, it's 11.30. We just uh, basically killed the whole morning eating and drinking coffee and uh, switching the tarp set up over to the other side. Uh, we're not gonna set it up over there yet because the lake's gone dead calm. The sun almost even came out for a couple of minutes, so hopefully we'll start to dry out. And if the wind doesn't come back up, we might not even need a tarp. I'm gonna tear down this traverse tarp and throw it in its bag. If we need to, we'll use it later. Uh, it definitely served its purpose last night though, because without the canoe and that as windbreak, and then Johnny's tarp over top, we probably would have uh, had a pretty miserable existence. Okay, so we moved everything over here. Johnny's, uh, actually they did set up the tarp above our fire pit. And here's where Johnny and Dave's tents are. Right there. There's our other carnage. I just brought my canoe over, but I'll show you the lake because it's finally gotten nice out. Oh yeah. This is a very hilly lake too, which is really nice. Beautiful backdrop. Just went for a little swim, Let's see if I can sit on here. Had a couple of mishaps, I don't know if you can see it. I bumped my head when I went to find the washroom. I was coming back out of the tree line and there was a big pine tree. It had just a little stump of a, uh, a limb left and I, I nailed my head off the top of it. Um, didn't cut it though, so it should be fine. I don't have a headache yet. My hat is now apparently forever stained by strawberry juice. This is from Johnny's Ziploc container, I guess. So, bump on the head. Oh yeah, I can really see it there now. Ah, so. Oh well, if those are the two worst things that happened on the trip, that's, that's not too bad. Difference. 